You are listening to the Anxiety Podcast, where we support you to overcome anxiety and reduce stress. We will get vulnerable and it will be real. Here's your host, Tim J.P. Collins. Hello and welcome to the Anxiety Podcast. I'm back again after a week off last week. I'll explain about that in a moment. Um, But yeah, welcome back. It's good to be here. And if you are new to the podcast, please head on over to anxietypodcast.com where you can get the End Anxiety Toolkit and other beautiful free resources um, for your viewing and listening listening pleasure. Um, Now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. So... BetterHelp is essentially um, going to help you uh, if you get stuck in solving problems. And sometimes we're faced with challenges in life, um, and because we're in them, it's difficult to see we need external help to work us through them. And I've been here myself, and and totally, you know, there's still times when I, I need this today. Uh, you know, it's just uh, you, we go through these cycles where we need some more help, and we need to get over the hump, and uh, that's why therapy can be extremely valuable for that. Um, when I first was experiencing anxiety, I kind of went for, th- for therapy. I ended up finding somebody and a place that was a really good fit for me, and it made a massive difference to making the right decisions in my life and moving forward and ultimately helped. I did the work, but it helped create that kind of launch pad for moving me in the right direction and, and changing my life. So um, I suggest, you know, trying out therapy can be massively beneficial. So I think if you're trying therapy or if you're thinking about trying therapy, BetterHelp is a great option. Um, It's convenient. It's accessible. It's affordable. It's online. You can phone. You can video. Do whatever you need. Um, You can get matched with a therapist after you fill out a brief survey and you're off to the races. So visit betterhelp.com slash anxiety podcast today and get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash anxiety podcast. Right. So I hope you've enjoyed the interviews I've been doing the last few weeks. Um, I secretly been recording those and building them up because I went on holiday for uh, three weeks. And so I had one of those interviews running each week that I was away. And then um, expecting last week when I got back on the 12th or 13th or something, I thought, oh, I'll record a quick podcast and get out for last week. And I just didn't get it done. I was just, uh, I was in recovery mode. I had a bit of jet lag going on, which I'll talk about, and a um, bit of the old holiday blues. And so I just wasn't in the headspace, in the mental space to create content. I just thought, all right, I'm just going to have a week off and people will may wonder where I've gone or they may just uh, listen to some music instead or something else. So um, anyway, I ended up going to visit my family in the UK for, for three weeks. And on the middle week, we went to an island called uh, Lanzarote, which is part of the Canary Islands. It's a Spanish island, but not super close to Spain. It's kind of off the northwest coast of Africa, which sounds very exotic uh, and difficult to get to. And it is quite difficult to get to from North America, but from the UK, it's about a four hour flight. So um, I had a week in England week on that um, holiday in Lanzarote and then a week back in England again and now I'm back here. So I think having three weeks off consecutively is the longest holiday I've had in at least 10 years, um, probably more like, I don't want to say 20 years. That makes me sound so old, but a long time, a long time. I never, I've always been in, I don't know if you can relate to this, but I've always been in jobs and myself historically, having been in sales jobs, I've always been in this situation where I thought if I took time off, I'd lose my job, which is very, um, you know, doom and gloom type thinking. But more to the point of I've just thought that, you know, if I take too long off, my sales numbers will be affected. And although, you know, a lot of the companies I work for and said, have said kind of, yeah, take time off. They don't really want you to take time off because they want you to be there and sell and, and produce and stuff. So it's always, and again, my experience is is my experience and it's been historically in the sales environment, it's always kind of like, yeah, you can take time off, but you know, just make sure you're sold enough before you leave and you catch up when you get back. Otherwise you're going to get fired. Um, and that probably wasn't always the case, but, um, that's how I felt. That's how I felt about it. And, um, so I always put this pressure on. I was always worried when I was away that, you know, my whole pipeline was going to melt down and, uh, I come back to, uh, less job prospects. So things have changed and uh, my life has changed in a big way. And now, although I'm still in a sales job as a a real estate agent, um, I don't feel the pressure anymore because 
Well, firstly, I'm self-employed. So if I don't do the sales, I don't have a boss phoning me up saying, hey, Tim, you haven't sold any houses this month. It's just me, myself and I not getting it done and and uh, and not reaching the goals that I've set for myself. So that was the that's the kind of first insight from going away is kind of that mindset around can you afford to take time off financially? Can you afford to take time off from your job? How much vacation do you get? I know in Europe, for instance, they typically get more holiday, whereas in America and Canada, often the standard is like three weeks, which is which is nothing out of a whole year. That's way too much work to get three weeks off of enjoyment. So um yeah, it was it was significant. And, um, it felt very good to, to, to decompress and take time off. And I've kind of put myself in that situation by working very hard for the last couple of years without any holidays. I'm not recommending that approach, but because the market has been so hot, I took off a lot of time. Oh, sorry. I worked a lot consecutively and made the most of a very active, uh, marketplace real estate wise to help people with buying and selling of their homes and just do as much work as I could. Um, so I really deserved a break. I deserved it. And, uh, I definitely didn't feel guilty taking the time off. Um, financially I'd saved up a bit, uh, and, you know, saved up some money from some previous work I'd done to, to make sure that when I come back, I wasn't, you know, starving or, uh, living paycheck to paycheck. That's fine. So I didn't have the financial pressure and it was nice to unplug. And one of the things I did, which I highly recommend. You know, I always talk about switching off from social media and I am a massive flip-flopper in that regard because sometimes I'm on it. Um, it doesn't make me feel better. It probably makes me feel worse, as is the case with the news. I don't, still don't really look at the news because uh, I just don't find any value in that. Um, but social media comes and goes. Sometimes I l- download the app again because I want to post some pictures because I feel like I should post some pictures and then it stays on my phone for a couple of days and I'm like, oh, there I am trapped into the old cycle again and then I delete the app and, and go back to my blissful ignorance, which I enjoy my blissful ignorance. And I, as I always say, if important things are happening in the world, you will see them and hear them because other people will tell you, you don't need to be plugged in. You don't, you're not air traffic control for the world's news. So that's something that I uh, continue to find beneficial is switching off those news sources. But I went a step further on this last trip, something I've never done before. Um, in all of my sales jobs, uh, because you're, you, you know, if you're in sales, you'll understand this. If you're not, I'll explain. But you spend a lot of time prospecting and a lot of time phoning people up where they hang up on you or to tell you to get lost in, in not as nice terms. And so when people do phone you back and they want to do business, it's kind of like that's everything you've worked for. That's like the the end goal, right? So you don't want to miss those, even if you're on holiday, right? So historically the phone rings and I'm on holiday. I'm like, oh, I'll just get this because it might be important. And you justify it by saying, well, this is what's paying for the holiday. So better answer the phone. And um, anyway, this time I took my SIM card out of my phone which means anybody phones me or texts me, um, I'm not going to get it. And I gave it to my assistant who very kindly had my phone for three weeks while I was away. And the practical part of that is meant that if anybody phoned me or texted me, I wouldn't get it. She would. And then she could, she had a, a variety of ways to handle that either by answering questions or if they were related to things, licensed things that you need to be a realtor for, she could refer them to a a friend of mine. Um, and, it was massive. It was massive. And and as I expected, because I just know how it goes, I didn't get as many phone calls or texts um, as I thought I might, because you just don't, uh, you know, a lot of the time in sales, people are phoning you back because you're generating the activity and people are phoning you back because you phone them. So when you stop phoning people, less people phone you. But anyway, aside from the practical answering the phone, what it did do was it allowed me to just absolutely relax and think, take the pressure off of being on call because, you know, the a lot of the pressure associated with it is the fact that your phone might ring or you might get a text, not because you actually got them, but the fact that, oh, I need to check my phone because somebody might have phoned and if I don't get back to them quickly, etc. So knowing that somebody was checking my email, had my phone and text, I had like n- no need to be near my phone at all. I had no need to answer my phone or look at my phone. I was completely in holiday mode, which is in my working life the first time I've ever done that. Um, and, uh, I've got to say it was absolutely liberating and, uh, fantastic. And I highly recommend it if you haven't done that to do the ultimate unplug, give your phone to somebody else, if at all possible, 
and um, yeah, not need to answer it. Uh, and again, it was predominantly the the fact of knowing that I didn't need to check because somebody else had it covered. Um, it felt so good. It was kind of like my first preview into what retirement looked like. My look like, I suppose, in that I didn't feel that overarching need to to check things out. And that was just that was my biggest takeaway that I wanted to share with you today. I know it might not sound like a big thing, but for me, that was significant and massive in terms of uh, not feeling the need to check and uh, the liberation or the freedom associated with that. I haven't experienced that before, but it allowed me to, I believe, be more present with my family, uh, spend more time, you know, just doing fun things without worrying about, I got to get back and, and check something out. Um, it was huge. And, you know, that was was so nice um a few of the highlights from the holiday um i had an interesting time on the trip out there just for some from travel fun we got on the plane leaving so when i was in uh, england we were leaving england to go to this little island in uh in the middle of the ocean and uh, they got us they loaded us all on the plane and they said we're having a problem with the air conditioning unit we're just trying to fix it uh anyway after about an hour and it was 40 degrees celsius on the plane which is i don't know it's 90 in the 90s in fahrenheit probably everybody's sweating very hot um my dad's taking his shirt off and he's just sat there in his vest because he's so hot everybody's sweating like crazy uh they eventually said right we're taking you off the plane back into the terminal again so we get off the plane go back into the terminal and everybody's uh sitting down and buying water and trying to rehydrate and then after about half an hour, they came back on and said, right, we're ready to go again. And off we went. So we ended up being late. Um, but uh, yeah, that first part of the trip was uh, not particularly enjoyable. Made it very nice when we finally arrived, reunited with our whole extended family and uh, got into a week of relaxation, sitting around the pool. We played volleyball. We played water polo. I may or may not have scored the winning goal in both games of the water polo, which made me very happy. Um, and yeah, we had a lot of food and a lot of dancing and a few drinks and stuff what i will say about the the food scenario is that i've definitely sort of changed my homeostatic food point now because uh they at these places they have have a buffet and it was buffet doesn't do it justice but they had every kind of food you could possibly imagine from you know burgers and pizza to beautiful locally caught fish and rice and um vegetable dishes and salads and desserts and all these things and um, now I gravitate towards, not because I feel like, oh, I'm on a diet, I have to, but I just really want that, you know, beautiful fresh caught fish and some rice and some vegetables and I'm super happy. So another thing I haven't done for a long time is because I do often pay attention to tracking diet and food was that I went and, and I didn't track anything. I just ate intuitively, um, which to me, I've always kind of you know, thought that's never possible. That's not going to work for me. And I came back and my weight was exactly the same. So I'm kind of like, it's messing with my head a little bit because I, I kind of expected myself to have gained 10 pounds and I came back and I'm exactly the same. Like, hmm, imagine if I could live like this, life might be more comfortable. Um, so anyway, I'm still, still pondering that one. I've gone back to check in for now in terms of tracking my food and stuff like that. But, uh, but yeah, we'll see what the, the future holds from that point of view. Um, I, uh, yeah, I'm now back at home and I've been back for a week or so. The jet lag for the first few days was pretty horrific in terms of an eight hour time difference from the UK to the West coast of Canada. And, uh, I got to admit, I just felt a little bit out of sorts and, um, you know, going to bed early in the evening because I was just absolutely wiped. But, you know, it's just, it's kind of a good reminder about anxiety and stress and all these types of things is that, um, it is tough and it is uncomfortable, but it passes. And the first day you're like, oh God, this feels awful. I've got no energy. I've got no motivation. I don't want to do anything. And then after a few days, it gradually wears off and you, you get back to normal again. So that's kind of a, you know, an interesting exercise in in trusting the process and just letting time pass and, and your body heals itself and, and you, you know, you get back on track again. Um, I've been for a few uh runs lately i don't know what inspired me to do this um it may have been watching a bit of david goggins the uh the inspirational chap on uh on youtube or something but i decided the other day to go for a run and uh i'm really enjoying it 
uh, and I haven't run for a long time. I've just been focusing on weights and stuff like that. But something about going out for a run and conquering an, a, a, a distance, and I've only been doing sort of half an hour at a time, but that run as high is a real thing. And those endorphins are real and they feel amazing and, and great when you get back and finish. And so, uh, yeah, I'm going to keep doing it and see how that goes. I do feel like I'm a bit heavy uh, for running, just uh, weight-wise. So, um, you know, maybe not, but I, I probably would like to lighten up a little bit if I'm going to run more often. I did this morning just find a local race where I live at the end of October, I think it is, 11 and a half kilometers, which is about six or seven miles. It's a, a mountain trail run, which I found. So I'm thinking, I said to my wife this morning, I'm just going to sign up for that. It's 10 weeks away. I'm going to sign up for it and I'll just start working towards it. I like having that kind of goal oriented thing. I do feel like a beginner in some ways, but I'm really not. Um, in mid 2000s, 2004 or five, I ran, which is a long time ago now, but I ran the London Marathon, which is 26.2 miles, 40 kilometers. I ran that um, in excruciating pain. Um, but I remember training for that. I injured myself about two weeks before training for it. But prior to that in the training, I remember this time when I could run for 45 minutes and I felt like I was floating. I felt like I was, it was effortless. I could keep going. I had, that's what, you know, fitness feels like is to be able to run and not want to stop every single step, which is kind of what it feels like sometimes. So I'm, I'm thinking I want to get back to that. I want to give that a go again. That's my new muse to play with is to get back into running shape just for fun and, and see what that feels like. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Um, I'd love to hear what you're up to and some topics that you'd like me to tackle on the podcast. Do you like the interviews? Do you want to hear more interviews? Do you want to hear me keep talking about solo stuff and sharing my life experiences with you? Um, let me know what you think. Uh, go to the contact page um, at anxietypodcast.com and send me a message. Um, send me an email and I would love to get your feedback in terms of the, the types of things you'd like to hear more about moving forward. Um, if you haven't yet, please go to Apple Podcasts and leave a review for the podcast or if you're on Spotify, you can click the little star rating um, or wherever else you happen to be. Please leave a review. Um, would love to continue to get the word out there on this. And remember, until next time, less anxiety, more life. Thank you for listening to the Anxiety Podcast. For more information, go to theanxietypodcast.com.